So in this question, we're going to try and get the transfer function g, which is equal to the speed omega m, that's the speed of this shaft, divided by ea, which is the input voltage to the motor. So we're going to go through three steps. The first one is going to be analyzing the electrical part of the motor. The second bit is going to be putting in the motor constants. And then the third bit is going to be analyzing the rotational system on the end. We then need to substitute all of those equations that we develop um, in together and we should be able to then rearrange it for this transfer function that we're looking for. So as I said, first step is looking at the electrical side of the system. So to analyze this electrical system, we can treat it as like mesh analysis, and therefore the equation that we need to solve is that the sum of the voltages in that circuit are equal to zero. So input is Ea, so I'll make that positive. We're then going to drop voltage across these two components. So it's going to be equal to the impedance and for a resistance, sorry, for a resistor, that's Ra, the resistance. And then we need to multiply it by the current. So Ia. For this one, it's an inductor. The impedance of it is going to be La S and the current is Ia. So basically, um, the voltage dropped through this component is proportional to the rate that the current is changing, the derivative with respect to time. That's why we end up with an S in here. And the last one we're going to drop across is the motor itself. So that's going to be minus VB. So that's our first equation. The next step I'm going to do is to substitute in my motor constants. All right, so we have two equations that we can use for this. So the first one is that the torque out of your motor, which I've already labeled here, is equal to KT, which is the torque constant, multiplied by IA, which is the current, again, running through this circuit. So to be able to substitute this back up into the other equation, we're gonna to need to rearrange it in terms of IA. So that becomes TM on KT. The second equation that we're going to have is that the uh, voltage VB is equal to KB times theta dot M. And if we want to, we can go ahead and the pass transform this. Oops, sorry. VB then is equal to KB. Transforming this, it becomes S theta M. One dot means we get uh, one S. So you can either substitute them all at the end or you can do it progressively. I might go ahead and do it now. So let's put these two back up into our first equation. All right, and I might factorize this a little bit to make it easier in a moment. So I'm gonna put, um, these two terms kind of together and take out the TM. So what I'm going to get is RA plus LAS on KT in the bracket. If you expand that out, it should be those two terms. All right, so to be able to keep going, we need our third equation, which comes from the rotational system. So for that, we're going to need to draw a free body diagram of our uh, system. So let me do it over here, and then I will transfer it down. So taking out the um, body and marking on some things. So we've got torque applied in this direction, and that's the torque from the motor. We then need to assume a direction that this thing is going to rotate in, and I'm going to assume it's going to be the same way. Um, so it's going to be J, the inertia, multiplied by the acceleration, or the angular acceleration, which is theta double dot M. Remembering this is theta M already marked in. And then we've got a damper that's applying um, a, a torque onto the shaft. And this is going to try and oppose the direction of motion and slow it down. So it's going to be the opposite direction. It's going to be D multiplied by the speed of the shaft, which is theta dot M. All right, so I've just copied that down here so we can keep going. And the equation that we need to satisfy for this free body diagram is that the sum of the torques have to be equal to J 
times theta double dot. So let's say that this is the positive direction. It doesn't really matter which one's which as long as you're consistent. So in this positive direction, we have Tm. This is in the negative direction, so it's minus. And this part here relates to the other side of the equation. It's in the positive direction, so I'm going to put it positive in the equation. So now what I want to do is rearrange this. I'm going to leave torque on one side and move everything else to the other. And that's because they both have the theta term in them. And then what I want to do is transform this. So Tm is a function of time. When we transform it, it's going to become uh, the Laplace of itself. Um, we would capitalize it, except I already wrote it with capital. J is a constant, so it stays out the front. When we transform this, it's going to get an S squared times theta m. Again, this is the one that gets transformed. I would capitalize it, but it's theta. It's kind of hard. And same thing for this one. I should quickly mention that we're going to assume all the initial conditions are zero, so there's no initial um, displacement and no initial um, velocity and things like that um, to consider. All right, so the last thing I want to do here is I'm going to factorize out the theta m. And that's what we end up with. So now what I should be able to do is substitute this equation back up in here, and it's going to eliminate tm from the equation. And the only variables should then be ea and theta m, which are directly related to that transfer function I'm going for. So let's sub it in. And we get that. Now what I'm going to try and do is move um, the two things with theta to one side and leave AA where it is. And at the same time, I'm going to factorize out the theta m. Oops, sorry, I missed the j's. Okay, so that's what we're left with. Now, if I want to, I can make this a little bit nicer. Um, I can see I've got kt here. So I can kind of integrate this with this other term. And one way of doing that would just be to multiply both sides by kt. Okay, so this becomes eakt, this one. So kt divided by kt, it's just going to disappear. And then kbks times kt, we end up with that. So that looks a little bit nicer. And remember the transfer function that I'm going for, if we scroll all the way back up, was omega m divided by ea. And we're going to be able to relate omega m back to theta m quite easily. So at this point in my process, what I'm going to try and solve for is theta m divided by ea. So coming back down. So theta m divided by ea, I can get quite easily. I just bring this down to the other side of the equation. And I'm going to be left with kt on this side divided by all this. Okay, so now the last bit is to try and change this. Instead of theta m, I want omega m. And these are related together. So omega m is the same as the derivative of theta with respect to time. It's like the speed. So you can write it like this if you want to. However, if we go back to this and we want to Laplace transform it, we would be able to say that it's equal to theta m s. So we can use this to change uh, into the theta m into omega m, sorry. And I think probably the easiest way to do that would just be to multiply both sides by s. Okay, so this becomes theta m s, which we've just said is the same as omega m. Ea stays the same. And then here, we're just going to end up with an extra s on the top line. I'll swap the sides over to make it look more like the transfer function. A bit bigger. Cool. 
So if you wanted to, of course, you could expand out that bottom line um, and make it um, different powers of s. Um, but I think I might just leave it like this for now and conclude that that's my answer for relating together the speed of the output shaft to the input voltage um, to my motor. So that's all there is for that question, and I'll see you in another video.